So what are the clinical features of IPEC syndrome? First of all, most common feature is early onset type 1 diabetes and autoimmune thyroiditis. And I is missing here. So early onset type 1 diabetes is frequently one of the most common manifestation. In fact, Nelson says any child with onset of type 1 diabetes mellitus within first 6 to 9 months of life, one of the possibilities should be IPEX syndrome along with the other early onset genetic forms of diabetes mellitus. So early onset type 1 diabetes mellitus you must remember. IPEX syndrome usually the onset is in the first year of life. In the previous syndrome that we discussed that is APS syndrome you will find that the onset of manifestations is somewhere between 5 to 15 years whereas in this IPEX syndrome it is the first year of life where the manifestations tend to develop. So there is autoimmune enteropathy, there is atopic dermatitis like lesions, so eczema like lesions may be seen in these patients, there is increased risk of food allergies, there is increased risk of peripheral eosinophilia and autoimmunity involving liver, kidneys and bone marrow. Bone marrow involvement can lead to the development of autoimmune cytopenias in these patients. So autoimmune anemia, autoimmune thrombocytopenia and autoimmune neutropenia have also been shown to occur. Treatment in IPEX syndrome is immunosuppression using either corticosteroids or tacrolimus and often agent, novel agents like abitacept have also been found to be effective. Stem cell transplant will be needed in refractory cases. IPEX syndrome is characterized by increased risk of bacterial infections. Fungal infections are minimal but increased risk of bacterial infections both typical and atypical have been known to occur.